Guys, uh, today we're looking at topic 7.3, which is strategies for user research. So to start with, this is a term that we need to know. It's called the user population. So this is the range of users for a particular product or system, right? And the thing to understand is that when we are talking about a user product, uh, user population and the products that we design for them, you know, we can design for a specific population. So for instance, we might design for um, children. So these are some children's scissors. Uh, of course, you know, an adult could use these scissors. Um, or we could divide, uh, design for uh, multiple populations. Now these are these are you know these scissors right here are meant for children, um, so they're going to have smaller um, holes for fingers and things like that. Um, you might have a, a pair of adult scissors like like these that a, that a child could use also, and, and maybe an older child. So then we're looking at at, a, at designing for for multiple populations. Whereas down here we're looking at um, designing simply for the the um, for children. So. We need to think about the range of users of our products or systems, okay, and and specifically design and do user research on that population. All right. So when carrying out user research, user populations can be classified into groups depending on age, gender, or physical condition. This can allow the designer to gather detailed feedback to generate insights for design development that are particular to each group. So this is from the IB, and you need to kind of understand what they're saying here is that when you are carrying out your re user research, one of the first things that you need to do is figure out who are your users. So that's your user population, right? You know, and try to classify them. Are you are you actually making something that is specific to a certain age, specific to a certain gender, specific to a certain physical condition? Um, and then that's where you're going to try to get the, the detailed feedback those are the people that you're going to include in your UCD. Remember, this is a um, user-centered design. So those are the users that you're going to center your research on, right? So, um, and then they're going to be part of that design development, okay? Now, if you have a very broad range of people, well, then, okay, then you're going to have a large user population and things like age may, may be less of an issue. Things like gender may be less of an issue or physical conditions. Here's an example that the IB gives. Um, so, you know, if you have a group of users who suffer from arthritis, so arthritis is where your uh, joints, um, it's basically a disease of the joints and um, it, it makes things hard to, to move or lift. It's, you know, basically, if you have uh, arthritis in your wrist, then you would have a difficult time picking up something that's heavy, like, say, this kettle. Um, and so, you know, somebody with arthritis in their wrist would be a different concern with design of a new kettle. Uh, and give different feedback than a population of students who say would not have arthritis in their wrist. So for instance, you might design something like this for a group of people who have arthritis, right? So you know they, they don't actually need to lift the kettle, they can just tilt the kettle into the cup, which is kind of a nice little feature, right? Uh, whereas this you have to lift off the stand and it can be quite heavy because you know every liter of water weighs one kilogram. So if you have two liters of water in here, you're talking two kilograms and somebody with arthritis in their wrist um, would have a difficult time lifting something that was two two kilograms plus the weight of the actual kettle itself. So, you know, those two groups of people are going to have different ideas about a kettle. And you have to think about that as you're designing. All right. So designers can observe and interview members of a user population in order to create fictional characters known as personae. So persona uh, and secondary persona and answer persona are... are um, they are um, basically fictional characters that you create. So this is a term that you need to know, which is a persona. Um, and a, it's a profile of a primary target audience for a, a product. And so this is Drew. He's an influencer. And you know, here's some stuff that people made up. This guy's not a real person. I mean, this is a, a real photograph of a real person. But this is probably a stock photo from, from you know, that you can buy online. Um, so this guy doesn't actually exist, but basically he's a fictional character. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get empathize with your user group, right? You're trying to sort of put yourself in their place. What is it that um, these people care about? What is it that they, um, you know, what are their motivations? What are their core needs? What are their beliefs about things? You know, because that's going to have an influence on your product design. And it's going to have an influence on the kinds of people that you're going to do your user research on. So you're trying to imagine who are the people who are going to be using my product. And that's going to be your primary persona. Okay. 
And we'll get into secondary and anti-persona in, a, in, a, in a, just a, a minute or two. So a persona is a profile of a primary target audience for the product, and these are fictional characters. So now a secondary persona is a profile of those who are not the primary target audience for a product, but whose needs the products should meet. So I'll give you an example here. You know, the primary target for Johnson's baby shampoo are babies, right? This is a, a type of shampoo that if you get it in your eyes, it doesn't burn, right? Because babies have a hard time like keeping their eyes closed when you're washing their heads. So, you know, you, you have a no tear um, baby shampoo. Now, that's the primary target audience, right? Is, is babies for this um, and children. Well, the secondary product market might be divers or snorkelers because actually this stuff is really great for making sure that your mask doesn't fog up. It puts sort of a layer or a film over top of the, the glass of the, uh, the dive mask and makes it so that it doesn't fog up, right? And the nice thing is it won't burn your eyes, right? So this is stuff that won't actually you know, cause your eyes to burn. So it is, um, that would be your secondary audience or secondary pers persona, right? Because those are people who, um, whose uh, needs are met by the product. Okay, an anti-persona is the profile of someone who would not be using um, a product, uh, right? So it, they're just basically the person who is not the primary uh, user of an object. So basically, or they would simply just not use it at all. And here's an example, right? Like here's uh, Jordan, he's the anti-persona. Here's uh, uh, Brian, Byron, sorry, uh, he's a persona. Um, this is where they live, this is what their goals are. This is, and now this is, has to do with investing, right? So basically, you know, um, you would look at this and, and create the anti-persona as well as the persona. Okay. Creating personas. This is a good website that helps you do that. Okay, it, it gives you some good idea of how to create a persona. And in a persona, you kind of want to write a short paragraph that describes the user. The user. You want to um, think about the goals that need to be completed, the life goals um, or experience tasks. Right? What task? Right. So you know, we have our our task is what is you know needs to be accomplished. Right. It's a current process to reach goal. Etc. Frustrations that somebody might have, the the motivations they might have, and just kind of as much information as you can possibly give. You know, how old are they? What is their job title? What is their family like? Where do they live? All of these things have have uh, an effect on on the user research that you do, right? Because you want to target those users, right? Specifically, if you're trying to to create a product that that fulfills a sort of uh, a niche in the market, so that would be some place in the market that that uh, um, a product is needed, but maybe there isn't one. You want to make sure that you understand who are the users of this, so that you can target them in your user research, and then later for your marketing. Okay, so when we're creating a persona, personas are are the primary target audience, and they are the typical stakeholders. A secondary persona is not the primary target for a product, but whose needs should be satisfied. Uh, they provide valuable alternative insight into the um, development of a product. The answer persona is those who uh, the product is not designed for, and personas are used to collect data to better understand the market. All right, why should you do this? Well, it prioritizes your designs. It focuses on user goals. Um, it, uh, it helps you understand the motivation of the users. Um, it uh, identifies opportunities, so like maybe there's a, a, a like a niche in the market that is uh, unfulfilled, so you can satisfy that that niche with a product. Um, you can test design concepts. Remember, we're talking about user research, so when you create a design, you would you would want to test it with that group, right? Um, you want to evaluate designs, so you want to make sure that you. Um, uh, Basically, it's kind of like the testing design concepts. You would use this user research to help you evaluate your design. Uh, you avoid costly surveys, so because surveys are expensive, so you would avoid all of those. Um, it creates a standard customer model. Okay, so it kind of creates somebody that that all of the people working on the product can kind of get their head around. It, it, it allows you to visualize something that's a, that's data like you know, just a, a group of data as a person. And so that helps with the empathy. Here's an example of creating a user profile, uh, sorry, a um, persona. 
Okay, so you would fill in some of these things to help you understand what kind of person you need to do user research on. Now, if you read this article, it's pretty interesting. Um, persona can go too far. So in other words, persona should not replace actual user research. So this is the problem with personas is that you, you, can, you can kind of go down what they call a rabbit hole on that. So you can kind of um, ignore you, you know, you, your, your biases and your assumptions about the market can, can be false. Right, and that's what it means to go down a rabbit hole. It means that you're kind of following a false lead. So that can be a problem. So your biases and assumptions about the market and about the customers that you're trying to target and the users can be wrong, frankly. And so you have to do actual re uh, user research. And so personas are, are, are useful, um, but also you don't want to ignore actual user research and only use personas. Okay, a scenario. So a scenario is an imagined sequence of events in daily life of a persona based on assumptions by researchers and designers. Okay, so uh, from the IBO, students need to be able to consider best and worst in average case scenarios that uh, provide a physical and, and social context for different persona. So a scenario is kind of, a, it's just what it's saying. It's a, an imagined sequence of events in daily life of a persona, which is also a fictional character, um, on assumptions uh, by researchers and designers. In other words, you're trying to imagine how would a typical user go through uh, some task in their daily life um, from start to finish and, and, and following the best and worst and average case scenarios on that. So like what could, what would be the best outcome? What would be the worst outcome and what would be one that's sort of in the middle okay so you know maybe um this is an example like okay i'm gonna go to burger king and i'm going to order uh, a whopper meal and or well let, let's say chicken nuggets i'm gonna op i'm gonna order chicken nuggets uh and french fries and a drink so my best case scenario is i order chicken nuggets um french fries and a drink and i go home and i, and I have all of those things and i have the dipping sauce Okay, an average case scenario would be, say, I go home and um, instead of, uh, and I don't have the dipping sauce for it. Okay, and the worst case scenario would be like I get home and I don't have French fries, I don't have chicken nuggets, or I don't have a drink, or they're undercooked, or you know something's wrong with it. Right, that would be like the worst case scenario. Okay, so you're kind of looking at those those types of things, and they look sort of like this, you know. Um, as far as the, this is how they represent these case scenarios. So these are called user case scenarios. And you know, you, you represent the, the customer and the system with people and you kind of see how somebody would navigate through a system, right? So for instance, you got a hungry customer, maybe that customer is going to register for um, a user account on your system, you know, your, your online ordering system. Okay, maybe they don't um, register and they decide to go to this and they order food right? Um, they pay online. So this is probably like a, a, an average or, or a best case scenario, right? So they pay online, they pay with a credit card, they pay with a sorry credit card or a debit card and it works. The food gets ordered, and a, a confirmation gets sent to the user by the email system and then eventually they get their food, right? Now imagine that something goes wrong here, right? Like you order, you try to pay online, it won't accept your debit card, it won't, it won't accept your credit card. Well, Okay, so then these links would be broken, the food would not get ordered, the, the order confirmation of course wouldn't happen, and then that, that would be a problem. So this is an example of, uh, of a um, scenario. Okay, here's a couple of videos and I would like you to watch them on scenarios. This one's kind of interesting, it's, it's talking about what we call abstraction on, on these scenarios, and, and the more abstract you have is, is, is the more general the scenario is. Um, the less abstract it is, the more specific the, the scenario is. In other words, the, the, um, there's more detail to the story. This is like a really general story, and this is a, a, a more detailed story, if you think of it like that. And this is a, an example of a user case uh, scenario and, and how it, it describes basically what, what I was talking about earlier. All right, thanks for watching, guys.